You're listening to Talking Raptors on Raptors Republic. 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 Okay, welcome to episode 21, season 8 of Talking Raptors. Barry Taylor here with Nick Reynolds. How's it going? It's a beautiful day. It's it is gorgeous. Just, we're almost out of Tampa. The shit is almost over. A <laughs> gorgeous day in downtown Toronto. Broadcasting as always on Raptors Republic, raptorsrepublic.com. Get your sixes. Come get your sixes. We got a six from here. Six, six over there. Six, six from the six. Drake, here's your royalty money. Anything happening? Big news, Barry. Oh. Big news. What's that? Uh, the Global Ambassador is getting Billboard's Artist of the Decade Award. Oh. Shout a out to decade that. Decade of Excellence. Wow. Fucking right. Drop the goddamn album, Drake. We need it. Summer's coming. Huge. There's no more basketball for us to watch. Huge. We need the album. Congrats, buddy. That is that is great. What what a global ambassador. Yeah, I was surprised that he didn't not once didn't dig down on Tampa. Say what's up, you know. It's Tampa, man. Yeah, I mean, well, he saw the fellas in uh, L.A. So. Yeah, of course. I'm sure you could see them in any other city. He probably saw them when they were in Miami. Yeah. He's like, I'll go to Miami. I'll go to South Beach. I'm not going to fucking Tampa. Shit, I'll go to Orlando. <laughs> yeah, anywhere. I'll drive there. I'll t- Memphis. I'll take the the Rolls Royce. Meet you in Orlando. Anywhere but that godforsaken city. Thing one. Things are winding down. Officially eliminated. Not a lot of things to talk about. Uh, sucks really. to watch the team. <laughs> it's weird. It, it feels like Summer League or something. It you know? does, You're just yeah. like, what is this? Like, why am I... <laughs> when I was watching... Last night against the Clippers, the whole time I was like, "What am? Why am? What am I doing here? Yeah, I know. Why am I doing this?" But I, I couldn't want, look away. Nope. Like a psycho, I just kept watching. So you have to put yourself through it. And <laughs> don't, I don't know why I, well, that happens. <laughs> like, why? Why couldn't I uh, done something else? Listen, Freddie looked amazing. Well, Fred's stealing coaches' oh, full uniforms. I meant new Freddie. But oh, yes. sorry. Well, yeah, he. I mean, yes, he does look good. I I I, I do want to say that like we we. Just as a franchise, and uh, if uh, New Freddy is back next year, we cannot be fucking calling him New Freddy. That's it's I just agree. crazy. I'm def- I'm definitely on board with that. All right, anything. The, I don't. Anything I never, but I've new never Freddy. liked New Freddy. No, it's just I don't know it, how this is gonna pan out. So it's like I don't want to give you a <laughs> <laughs> nickname when you're not on the team, right? Right, right. He looked awesome though. Mm-hmm. Some nice blocks, swatting cousins. He's not scared of nobody, he man. Ain't, he ain't scared of the boogeyman. No. How washed is is? He dribbled off his foot. Yeah. Oh, and also, just real quick, during that game when it was starting to become a blowout, the Clippers had a two on one. The I think is Morris. Try to bounce past Alley Oop. Oh yeah, I remember that. Like he's that that is that's some disrespectful shit. Oh, I literally I remember saying that. I'm like, oh, now you're just trying to fucking disrespect. Okay. All right. It's too much. I mean, I get it. You're playing the bench. I understand that. I get it. But. But it's still a regular season game. That's Stanley Johnson, eh? That's not. <laughs> what are you doing here? Jesus Relax. Christ. Yeah, no, it's uh. That's what sucks when your team is not good. You get people can punk you and there's yeah. Sure. Not a lot you can do about it, you know. Yeah, no, it's it's fucked up for sure. And then, the but just not to dwell on it, but that loss to the Wizards, when first of all Kyle Lowry didn't even play, which is okay. Where you really. Tanking, really tanking. Just the fact that he's listed on, on uh, the injury reports as out for rest. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what are you, what are you resting for, bro? Mm-hmm. You know, the playoffs coming up. There's nothing. <laughs> there's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that, and then um, that game was they just wouldn't say die. You know, it was just it was just it was almost hilarious to see this team that they're the management is clearly being like it's over, guys. Shut it down. Yeah. They're like, no, no, it's God, not no. fucking happen. But then you had that sequence. Where they had four open threes in a row and didn't hit any. I was like, that's Tampa right there. That's 
Circle that sequence. There's Tampa Bay. Yeah, or or it's the basketball gods being like, no, 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 no. You don't want to go to play. You, right, right. Yeah, that's true. Okay, don't. That's a good point. We're not putting this in. The thing was, too, every one of those threes was short, so it was like, yeah, these guys are exhausted. Like it's over. Mentally and it's fucking physically exhausted. Right? Yeah, you're right, Teres Kyle Lowry. Right. He's fucking tired of this bullshit. Yeah. Now we just sit and wait for the lottery. Right. Yeah. I mean, now it's just fun and games. Go uh, stretch your legs, guys. Run around. <laughs> Some bounce pass alley oops. Yeah, yeah. Try crazy shit. Who <laughs> cares, man? Go for it. Go get. Let Bembry try to do a three sixty dunk mid game. Yes. Do crazy shit. Absolutely. The, Why not? Just don't get hurt. Anything. Have, listen. The fuck. fact that Fred Van Vliet is now stealing coaches' uniforms. This is where we're the shenanigans we're at mm-hmm. with the season. Because once you see that, dude, the post the post that Sports Center made, where it's like Toronto Raptors, eliminated, like the biggest, fo- even the Raptors account was like, yeah, but you could have used size 12 font here. <laughs> Dog, what are you screaming at everybody for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, uh, it's a lot more like tongue in cheek and more fun than I thought it would be. I mean, we we saw this coming, I guess. It's, uh, right. You weren't blindsided by it. It's a slow deterioration of the team for... Many months. And mm-hmm. God willing, they never have to play in Tampa ever again. I hope if they have to play somewhere, because who knows with this fucking government in this province. That's a big time. Go to, go to Buffalo. Go to Buffalo. Go anywhere. Don't go to fucking Tampa. Please. Yeah. You just, well, Buffalo, the, the Jays are letting more fans in. They're sure. increasing uh, in, the, in the vaccinated sections are allowing more fans in. Listen, man, the very first Comedy Records U.S. office in 2014 was in Buffalo, was in New Buffalo, York. Yeah. And their art district, they have like a, it's legit nice. All right. Buffalo's I, got some shit going on. So I'm not, I'm not mad at Buffalo. It ain't fun. It's better than Tampa. I'll tell you that right now. I've never been, but uh, you, I, I uh, I'll take your you. word for it. You I haven't been wrong uh, about a lot of things, Barry. So I, I believe you <laughs> in this. That's for sure. I promise you. And think of all, there'd just be more, like people would cheer for the Raptors in Buffalo. Yeah. Oh, much more. Like, right? dude. You know what the weirdest? You know when they pan to the crowd? I don't, because with, with the streams, you get the fucking, they just fuck off to the crowd all the time, right? Yeah. No, like the 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 jerseys that people are wearing, it's insane. It's just a ra- it's just it's just random shit. Yeah, it's it's like w- someone's wearing a Steph Curry jersey, but he's not playing. <laughs> he's not here. He's yeah. uh, there was a Cavs jersey, like a I think a Kyrie Cavs jersey, like just supporting basketball. Just, in just general. they just like basketball, but not uh, not our it's brand of basketball. It's because they're losers. Yeah, that's why. It's because they're all losers. Yeah. So the draft lottery is coming June 22nd. As of now, the Raptors have a 31.9% chance at a top four pick. 7.5 for the first, 7.8 for two, 8.1 for three, 8.5 for four. Most likely, their odds are them getting the eighth pick. But it does say that uh, the Pelicans only had a 6% chance when they got Zion. So... If Adam Silver were ever going to rig a draft for the Raptors, I feel like we earned this one. I think so. You know? Yeah. I think it's happening. Right? Yeah, I think it's happening. I mean, who's, what team's gone through more shit this year? Right? <laughs> well, do you want Cade Cunningham to waste his fucking life away in uh, in Oklahoma City? Thank you. Is that okay. good for is that good for the league? Exactly. Right? And uh, Silver never re- really gave a real legit apology for that interview where he threw Messiah Jerry under the bus, right? A little something else. Yeah. A little something else to tuck in there. <laughs> yeah. If you're you know what I'm saying? Blatantly racist, maybe when give us a higher sending, draft pick. When you're sending your uh, PowerPoint from the Raptors to the NBA, just being like, here's why we think we deserve the first pick. <laughs> just you include that clip. Close with that lives, clip. Blue lives matter, huh, Adam? <laughs> Send us a fucking draft pick, please. Yeah. June 22nd is what we have to look forward to at this point. Well, we got three more games, Barry. Come on. The Bulls? I'm going to watch them like a little I know. I, I know. That Sunday, Sunday, every single t- team in the goddamn league is playing. Hmm. Cool. And I'm I'm watching them all. <laughs> Just going to open up shop. Yeah, man. Just get a case of beer and not move. Just sit down. Multiple screens, multiple games. Okay. Why the hell not? Literally, what? there's nothing else you can do in this city. So. Um. No. As well support the team. The only the, the scary part is is uh, 
we do not have a date when they are coming home. That's uh, not to make this, you know, fucking right? terrifying, but right. They, uh, by all accounts, everyone said that they're going to be sticking around Tampa for a while. A while. That's where they're doing Through all the, the things and interviews, yep. all the draft stuff. Everything's sticking around. Everything's, yep. everything's happening in Tampa. And by all accounts, every single player hates it. <laughs> of course they do. They do it's not a like it. Shithole city. Even my friend I was talking to last week who lives in Miami, I was talking about how shitty Tampa is. And he's like, yeah, no, it's 100% garbage. He's like, it's the worst city in the state. I was like, okay. Wow. You know? Yeah. Everyone knows. Here's the thing, Barry. <laughs> this is back to just, just, just about Tampa in general, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I can understand if you live in Tampa, right? And your team is uh, maybe the Heat. I don't know. Maybe okay. Orlando. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, let's say the Raptors are playing the Heat. I would, I would, I would understand why you would cheer for the Heat. Sure. Right. But now right. if your team is not there, would you go there and boo the home team? You wouldn't think so. Right, because you know? I, 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 the, the, the Mavericks is like when I go visit my cousins, we go see Mavericks games, and, mm -hmm. and you know not, we're not always lucky that the Raptors are there. Obviously, obviously, I'm cheering for the fucking Raptors. Of course, but if the Raps aren't playing, I'm cheering for the Mavericks. I'm not gonna be a psychopath. You want to be part of it. So don't want to get killed in Texas. Make, yeah, well, yeah, that's a big thing too. Sure. I I, I don't know. I just uh, they got a the place is shit, and I just it's terrifying that I don't know when they're coming home. And uh, like remember I told you it was a big fight. It was at the that uh, arena in Arlington. What fight? The big fight, Canelo Alvarez. Oh, the right, right, okay. On yeah, this yeah. weekend, yes, seventy thousand people in the yeah. arena, full, yeah. sold out. Well, I mean that's the other thing too. Was again when I was talking to my friend in Miami, he's saying I was like, "What's going on down there?" He's like, "It's over, man." He's like, "I was at a concert with fifteen thousand people last week." I was like, "Fuck, all right." Woo. Okay, and then but the interesting thing was, and he's in Miami, likes, and he's like, "You guys are in trouble up there." He's like, "We hear how bad it is for you guys," and I was like, "Yeah, it's not good." And he's like, yeah, and he's genuinely concerned. He's like, "Is everything okay?" Like, it, everyone's yeah. talking about how bad it is in Canada right now. It's like, yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of that is also like they think it's fucking like martial law and shit. Like they're. Mm. You know what I mean? You're getting pulled over. Where the fuck are you going, man? Come on, let's go. Stay home. Yeah, like, yeah. It's not. I mean, from which mind I you, mean, I don't go anywhere, so I don't fucking. I mean, it the, could be happening. Uh, <laughs> our uh, premier did try to set up, right? But the the cops were like, "Go fuck yourself." Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I mean, anyway, what a time to be alive. Where yeah, we the people the of wheels. South Florida are saying, "You guys are fucked." Good you know? God. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think it would be get to this point, but here we are. Yeah. Well. Here. What a fucking year. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Three more games. This is our last podcast of the regular season. Next next week we'll have the season finale, I guess. Season finale is next week. But real quick before we forget, before we wrap up the week in review, one of the best moments of the year happened with Pascal Siakam buying his mom a house. Buying his god. That's what it's about. Right? Mm -hmm. That was nice. Yeah, it was beautiful. That was fucking great. That was a great thing to see on Mother's Day. Fucking serious house, too. Beautiful home. My favorite part of that video by far is him explaining to his mom that it's her house and immediately instead of just going and running around she takes her shoes off yeah. and then goes and fucking i was like yeah. that is a fucking mom i live right here there. now sorry that yeah, is a she, mom yeah. like, this is like, mine she doesn't panic she doesn't throw shit in the air she takes her shoes off mm -hmm. and then goes and runs around i was like that is fucking great that's right keep it clean so there it is. See, we can find positivity on this podcast. Yeah. The season's almost done. What's more positive than that? <laughs> thing two. So one thing that gave me some hope and just good feelings yesterday was Josh Lewenberg from TSN tweeted out from an interview he had with Bobby Webster. Mm -hmm. When he asked Bobby about Messiah Jury's future, Webster said, quote, we know how committed Messiah is to the team and it's really a non-issue for us, end quote. That's a good sign, right? Yeah, that's what I'm, you want to hear. Again, we have no idea, but that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. That's something, right? Not to debate, is he going to stay? Is he not going to stay? Because again, we don't have a fucking clue. But here's what I think we can figure out now is when do you think we will know by? Okay, so season ends on Sunday. Mm -hmm. They're doing all their exit interviews and all that shit in Tampa. So you would assume that's going to start Monday, Tuesday. Mm-hmm. 
maybe maybe a week at the most anyway right the draft lottery is june 22nd and larry tannenbaum told the toronto sun they're gonna start talking about his contract next week Mm -hmm. so just based on these kind of elements wait didn't larry also say that Masai was gonna fly back to toronto there was something weird about. I feel like he's. That's what Larry Tannenbaum said in in that. Oh no, it wasn't that article. Cause it was saying he's coming home because his family's still here. Like his kids and everything are still here. Right. That's right. So if he's coming home here and they're staying there for the draft, what does that mean? <laughs> it's over. What does that mean? <laughs> that's not good. He's back here to pack his kids' shit up. Let's get the <laughs> fuck out of here before we're, they close it down even we're more. We're going to Washington, baby. Yeah, get some West, fucking Westbrook jerseys. <laughs> yeah. Today, take off that Larry Drew. He's not coming back. He's yeah, not. he's coming with us yeah. to Washington, yeah. guys. Let's fucking go. Again, not to debate if he's going to stay, if he's not going to stay. When do you think we'll know by, though? What's your gut? Do you think we'll know? Let me start here. Do you think we'll know by June 1st? Yeah, around there. Well, we'll know. But I can't say June 1st. That's uh, I'll, we'll, we'll know before uh, the lottery. Before June 22nd? Yes. Because the lottery is the 22nd. Yep. But then the actual draft is july 29th okay now this is just like i know i don't think you know the answer to this question this is just i need to like when you're given your yearly contract right or, or x amount of years mm. when does that end right when is that when, when is your job question. done that's a great question is it done on sunday the last game doesn't make sense that that would be yeah i case. bet it's after the the exit interviews and all that or is it after is it the draft? Because that's still technically this year, is it hmm. not? Is it? I kind of feel like it's starting. The draft is like start when you start over. Like, I feel like actually, this is what I'll say. Well, what's this draft called? The It is. You're right, though. It's called the 20. Well, it's the 2021, 2021 draft. 2021 20, draft. So if your contract is until 2020, tw- the end of 21. But it's kind of fucked, though, because the NBA like seasons cross over years, right? Like, it's a, like this is the 2020, 2021 season. And next one's going to be the 2021-2022 season. Mm -hmm. So that's what kind of fucks it. No, but I think that's still like part of the the season. So it's like that's your season, right? That draft is included in the season. So it's like you have to fucking do your duties before your contract's over. Please, Masai, stay for that. (laughs) (laughs) I think the draft is next season. Really? Because you have the player for next season. So it's like the beginning of next season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, the final game... But no, but because... Oh, it's so hard to say because he played and your drafting was all done from this season. So you get to select him at the end of this season, right? Right. But but like Flynn was picked in last year's draft and played this season. Right. So I feel like it's like you stop the seat. So the the la- if there's a game seven in the finals, it's going to go down on um, July 22nd. And then the draft is July 29th, one week later. So I would say his contract's done July 23rd. Okay. That's what I'm saying. And then the new season starts July 29th on the draft. That was just more semantics. So there's no... Uh... No, no, no. It's a, it's a good question, though. I like that. I like, we're, I like the question. But so we will say we're guessing... I agree with you. I think by the draft lottery, they know. Yeah. So June 22nd. So we're just going to basically live in hell for the next... Yeah, but I also think, week. like, I think Masai knows, but he's like, he doesn't, he's like, listen, this is not how fucking business works. I'm not signing this until mm. I absolutely need to. You know what I mean? Like, right. I don't know, man. I th- I do think this, uh, the, that pen, the, the pandemic and, and Toronto not being open might have a little bit to say on, uh, sure. his direct, his like direct, uh, you know. Sure. I don't know. I don't know. No, all in, it's affected my life, so I can only imagine. That it's it's, just, uh, <laughs> you know what it is? It's because this. So this is the first year, obviously, in in seven seasons that they won't be in the playoffs. And I was part of me was actually I was like, you know what? I'm going to enjoy a stress free free playoffs. Yeah, I'm going to fucking watch all these series and just enjoy them for great basketball. I'll mm-hmm. enjoy some upsets, some nice storylines. You know, just get to watch basketball, man. Just just, just love just the enjoy game. Enjoy it. Yeah. And not have a heart attack. Yeah, you just, you just get to appreciate the game <laughs> with no emotion. But now we don't. That doesn't matter until he stays or goes. It's going to be. No, like, I, th- I think I'm going to be able to shut it off, man. Like, I think I'm going to be able to shut it off until I get that, that notification. That fucking notification. Yeah. I think so, man, because basketball oh. will keep going and I'll just like, be like, eh, you know. Yeah. 
yeah. I guess the other thing is too is like how do other teams approach him? Like, so say the Wizards are in the playoffs, can they then go talk to him? Do you know what I mean? Does he have to wait till everyone's done? Uh, I guess they can go talk to whenever the fuck they want. Well, that's tampering. I mean, technically, no, you're not allowed to do that. You have to ask permission. But who do you ask permission from, Masai? You know what I mean? I'm like, I don't know who the <laughs> yeah, fuck you yeah. ask. Hey, okay. man, can I talk to you? Let's not go down this rabbit hole. Hold on. Before we get out, wait. wait yeah. Gut, yes or no, he's staying. I think he, I think he stays. All right. Me too. My gut. Yeah. Me too. It's uh, Fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is never easy being a goddamn fan of this team ever. Never. No, put that never. put that fucking cherry on top this Sunday of a season. Oh, can you imagine? Can't wait. No, that would just. Here's the thing. Okay, worst case scenario, he leaves. I'm very confident in Bobby Webster. Yeah, I'll run this podcast in the ground. Whatever you say, <laughs> I'll run it every week after week. I'll run and it. And I'm the very. Again, we talked about this last week. Um, our global ambassador and Bobby Webster are a pretty dope one-two punch. Yeah. So. If that is the worst case scenario. Yeah. No, it's uh, like the organization is going to be fine. It's just uh, a, lot, a big part of uh, the soul and heart. And and uh, it's, it's uh, anyhow. Yeah. It's good. He's going to resign. It's going to be great. It's going to be the only good thing that we've had all season. And uh, it'll that will that good will and, and, and hope will carry on until uh, till we get Cade Cunningham number one. And fucking, you know, then it's just cheers. Yeah. Then it's just, we can't wait till this, the next season <laughs> starts. Yeah. Yeah. No, listen, I mean, the guy famously told all of us to believe in ourselves. Yeah. Well, believe in the city. Don't, don't leave then. Don't think you accounted don't fucking for, leave. don't think he accounted for everyone being fucking depressed and stuck inside the house. It's, uh... <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's all. That's all for that. Thing three. I didn't know this. You just told me this right before we started. I saw J. Cole was on the cover of Slam. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay. First first uh, non-basketball player to ever make the cover. Interesting. Or, or is he? Because you're saying the man is actually playing basketball. Yeah. Well, I mean, at first it appeared that like, uh, no, sure. no, it's just a rapper. Well, he's more than a rapper. He's, he is. Uh, he signed a contract with the uh, the BAL. What's the BAL? It's the Basketball uh, Africa League. Okay. It's the new uh, NBA expansion that the uh, move to what we're scared Masai might go and fucking run the whole thing. But uh, J Cole is going to play for Rwanda. I'll just sorry, just real quick, not to dwell on this again. But if he does anything but go to another team, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Sorry, Jerry. If it's it's if he goes to another team that I'm gonna want to kill myself. Right. I agree. Okay. Yes, one hundred percent. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. If you go and take your fucking powers, go to, to our run, competition, run NBA Africa. Fucking right. Yeah. If you go to Washington, New York, anywhere. No, just anywhere, anywhere in the league. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna fucking. It's gonna be. A, I'm gonna have some problems. Yeah. Go run the the anyway. African league. Yeah. Okay. Where J Cole is playing now. Mm-hmm. Interesting. That's and, crazy. And man. yeah, he's playing for Rwanda. That's incredible. Um, it was three you- to six games. I think they're saying he's he's playing. So I, you're the I, one who told me that was it a podcast you saw or listened to or whatever he was on where he talked about when he had that moment where it was like he could that like, was it. he wrote that for the players tribute oh that's what it was right yeah. right where he could yeah yeah, 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 like, yeah what are you yeah. writing for the players tribute this that's is a, right the, and also his album this is the greatest album release oh, of all time dude. that is pretty good that's it's pretty called good. the fall off like it's about wow man that guy's living his life that's dude what else do you want in your life you know how much that kills Drake inside? Can you just how many uh, ACLs Drake has torn just playing ball in his yeah, yeah, in yeah. his house? And J Cole's like, <laughs> dude, you you're t- I'm going to play in the African League, bro. I'm going pro. <laughs> That's a really good point. Okay, do you think there ever comes a time when he gets a like a G League spot? I could see a G League spot. Uh, give him a ten day. Why not? Right. Like, dude, Master, I was at the pregame when Master P played for Were the you? Raptors. I swear to God, That's I was there, amazing. yeah. Wow. That would be pretty fucking dope. I could see that being a good little PR thing. Yeah, man. That, Ten day I, summer league? Like, I know, uh, when was it? It was last year, I guess, last season when uh, uh, I think it was Detroit said, hey, yo, we'll give you a 10 day. Right. Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't some garbage, like, not garbage, but like team that's shit. Why? Of course, why wouldn't you do that? Do you know how sick that is? You're just rich, 
and you're like, yeah. I'm going to hire the best basketball coach to break down my shot and teach me to shoot. Yeah. And also to be rich and famous enough where they're like, yeah, you can come play in the NBA for 10 days. Yeah. Fuck. You were going to have to start selling a lot more comedy albums, I think. Something. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm also, you know, we're, we're not going to. He's at least an athlete. Like he's <laughs> six foot three, six four, or something like that. Sure, sure. Big boy can play ball. Listen, don't sell yourself short. All right? Hey, man, I've I seen can, that jumper. I can play. I've seen that. If I get hot, good God, watch out. I want I won't be able to play. I've always played in Kobe's, and they're not selling them anymore. So that's <laughs> that's why my career is over, buddy. God damn! I retire with the shoes. <laughs> That's yeah. That's fucking Nike's fault. Yeah, you know, Nike ruined my career. Not genetics. No, okay. Well, man, shout out to J Cole. That's pretty cool. That's just I don't know. It's a nice story. This, this, it's fucking awesome. Yeah. I hope he he's he's okay. Like I don't want him to go embarrass himself. I mean, hey man, if he had a chance to play college basketball, he for sure knows what he's doing. Oh, he can play. Not be a piece of shit. He for sure can play. Yeah. Hey, it's all about finding little nuggets of positivity now. And that, despite it having absolutely nothing to do no, with the Raptors. Well, I guess you could kind of tie it into the NBA Africa, Masai Ujiri, Circle of Life. That all comes together, right? There we go. Yep. And, uh, well, you know how it comes in together? He's a giant artist and he's he's putting his album out first. He's like, hey, mm-hmm. I'm coming, Drake. Mm-hmm. I don't want no fucking problems. Don't put your shit out on Friday. Fair enough. And uh, you know what I mean? So that's how it ties back. Okay. So Drake is coming. Maybe maybe that's what this whole shit is. Like, I got to fucking sign this 10-day. Get this album out because Drake is coming. Thing four. Four for the... Thing. Thing four. It's time for the gospel. This is the second last uh, last time we will ever do this. this and have is, they been coming out? Like, I know they've died down quite a bit. Are they still... Uh, they were... He was quiet. And then we, we, yeah. we got a gift from God. Okay. The basketball gods... Uh, there it is. Happened uh, yesterday. Okay. Uh, this is the the gospel of of Eric Flynn, who was at the game. In Tampa, he, he was in Tampa. In Tampa, he was in Tampa. Yeah. Right on. Uh, so I'm gonna, as as always, I'm reading this exactly as written. Yes. Of course. <clears throat> of course. Never ever have I seen so much incompetence. The NBA officiating is the worst I have ever seen. Paul George threw an elbow at Gary Trent, and they called the foul on Gary Trent. Calls for what they say is for superstars and not for others is killing the game. One player you can't even breathe on, Kiwi Leonard. (laughs) NBA players need to petition for better officials than they are getting. It's a travesty, the incompetence of those officials. Was there a picture with that or just... No picture. No picture. Just fucking passion. He didn't, pull, he didn't pull out a picture of a ref staring into a mirror with a bag of garbage? No, but Keith, no, he did not. No, that's uh, that's common, though, I'm sure. Feels like it was, uh, there was an opportunity there. Oh, 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 only only to trash women, Barry, not to... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, if anyone... Uh, well, I mean, have you? did he ever accept your friend request? He did not. Oh. Shoot, because, you know, we could turn him on to the Whistleblower podcast and... Really enlighten the man. Yeah. Well, I would love to see Eric Flynn's reaction and subsequent posts after listening to the whistleblower podcast. Oh, he's fucking getting his son the fuck out of here. That's for sure. <laughs> fuck yeah. Malachi always wanted to be a Laker. <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah. Kiwi Leonard, you piece of shit. Can't yeah. even breathe on him. It's the funniest thing ever. Ah, Kiwi. What a guy. <laughs> Miss that dude, man. Thing five, thing five. Chicken. Wrapping up the spicy category. <sighs> yeah, next week is uh next week is blind taste test, right? That's right. Woo-hoo. Season finale blind taste test. Tokyo hot fried chicken. They were sitting fifth in the non spicy category power rankings. So we go to check in. Got a spicy Nashville sandwich from there. Very good. Yeah, it was awesome. Very good. Presentation was amazing. It was wrapped, sauce on the side, in its own individual box. Yeah, not great for the environment, but listen, listen, hey, what are you going to do? I don't know what outside looks like. Probably trash. Okay, so just to recap, we've got... Heartbreak Chef. Heartbreak Chef at one. 
Chica's at two. Mm-hmm. Dirty Bird at three. PG Clucks at four. Yep. Tokyo Hot Fried Chicken at five. Mm-hmm. Does anything move for you after experiencing Tokyo Hot Fried Chicken? Yeah, it did. Holy shit. It does. It's, Holy uh, shit. Okay. That sandwich was better than the sandwich I had at PG Clucks. <laughs> PG Clucks. Fair, hey, fair is fair. <laughs> Fair is PG Clux is it's locked. it's uh it's you know what this is perfect for the season that we're having. It's what I thought was gonna be great, and and then and, and you know a, a walk to the playoffs it's gonna be no problem. Not even they're, so they're dipping. Yeah, Tokyo's jumping PG Clux. Yeah. Fuck. All right, I can I can support that. You had the sandwich. I did. It was amazing. Tokyo Hot Fried Chicken is extremely good. It's on College, in between Ossington and Dover Court. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend. Yeah, okay. I'm down with that. I agree. PG Clux really dropped the ball. It was theirs to win. Like we, we, Theirs we, we, to lose. Look What's, at how they packaged this. Yes. Look at how they packaged this. Yes. PG Clux gave it to us like they punched it before they put it in the box. Yeah, PG Clux fucked up. There's mm -hmm. no doubt about it. And again, we went to the Queen Street one, not the OG one, but that shouldn't matter. No. Okay. No, that should not matter. And and listen, I was biased for PG. I really thought PG Clucks was fucking knocking the shit out the park. No questions asked. Absolutely, I was on board with that too. And uh, here we are. Just disappointment. They after have disappointment. since the spicy category was introduced. They have fallen from two all the way to five. Mm -hmm. Holy shit! Yeah. Wow. Okay, I agree with you though. I think this is necessary, and I think it's um, makes sense. It's, it's like the Lakers without LeBron, man. <laughs> yes, it is big time problems. It is, so that's gonna that's it. That those are the final spicy category power rankings, and the the blind taste test will you know rearrange some things for okay, sure. Okay, yeah, that that'll that, for sure. That's a good point, but because they're all gonna be here at once, I don't know how that's gonna happen, but we're gonna figure it out. Okay, a lot of a lot of Uber Eats is coming at one time here. Yeah, it's gonna take some coordination, not seen on this podcast before but let's see if we can pull it off we're, we're gonna we're gonna fucking do it Fuck. and then i'm making the sandwich jesus christ remember that that's i said that on here i am gonna make one i'm gonna try <laughs> to top the best one okay are you gonna make deep fried or are you gonna grill like what are you no i'm gonna deep fry i mean we're, we're doing fried chicken sandwich I gotta, i'm scared to deep fry things but uh it is I, scary you know, i'll do it, it my, is, girl, my girlfriend did said her mom's kitchen on fire. Yeah. It was terrifying. But but you know what? They built know. that kitchen back and Listen, we're still here. Still together. We're still here. Yeah, exactly. Anything's possible. So, all right, that's it. That's that's the gonna wrap up the top five. That's what what a what a season. Yeah. What I, a hey, goddamn season. Can I just season. say one thing about uh please. About um uh chicken? Yes. And uh so listen, I had a little little cheat they had to had to go back to Heartbreak Chef, Barry. I had to <laughs> went back <laughs> had to do it man yeah, had to go I mean, there's nothing uh, wrong with that I don't yeah know. To, to, you know normally I like to stick to the you know Tuesdays you know when, wherever we fucking record this Wednesday <laughs> yeah get it once a week nope me and my girlfriend decided we're going I like it I like and, it a lot uh, so I didn't get a sandwich I got the big ass mac what the chicken this is huge how did you not how am I just learning about the this the chicken okay. on the macaroni and cheese yeah <laughs> But he almost cried. It was so <laughs> holy. It is so fucking good. This is why the man's it's a heartbreaker. It's inexplicably good. Like, holy it, shit! Crazy good. Holy so shit! It's like that the the original chicken sandwich, not the dati, like the the first yeah. one, right? Yeah. That on top with the Carolina butter sauce. Wow. On top of like a three four cheese macaroni. Good lord. Good lord. So good. Wow. So wow. goddamn good. That's incredible. Okay. Man, I mean, uh, you know, it's no surprise. These guys are the champion. Yeah. Of the spicy and non-spicy category. Ran the table. And now they're coming at it with mac and cheese. I'm pretty sure you can also get macaroni and cheese inside the chicken sandwich. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Holy shit. What are we talking about? It's obviously the best. <laughs> wow. Shout out to Heartbreak Chef. Absolute yeah. legends. Easily yeah. the best find and the best thing to come from this podcast this whole season yeah 22 episodes deep it yeah. took us 22 episodes to realize that we have incredible chicken in this a city and none greater no than the heartbreak chef wow 
That's great. I got now. I'm gonna have to try it one day. Yeah. Okay. Can't wait till uh, can't wait till we do the blind taste test. Blind taste test gonna be interesting next week. We'll see how it goes. And just in closing, wrapping up the top five spicy power rankings: Heartbreak Chef one, Chica's two, Dirty Bird three, Tokyo Hot Fried Chicken four, PG Clucks five. You're listening to Talking Raptors on Raptors Republic. Hey, look at this! We got a sponsor. Oh my gosh! Only took eight seasons and twenty two episodes. Support for Talking Raptors is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best men's below-the-waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right. Can you believe that? Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer. Listeners of Talking Raptors can get 20% off. And free worldwide shipping with the code TALKINGRAPTORS at manscaped.com. Let me tell you something. I had the lawnmower 4.0 shipped over. And very impressive. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Like far more professional grooming product than I ever have owned in my life. And uh, and as you know, I cut my own hair. And that's my thing. And I have clippers and I've had clippers all my life. And this this is the best... uh, hair trimming thing i've seen in my life but you're gonna use top and bottom eh can't go wrong the upgraded trimmer includes a multi-function on-off switch that can engage a travel lock it also gives you the ability to turn on the 400k led spotlight on and off when you need for a more precise shave (sighs) this is what i'm talking about you got a goddamn headlight on the thing that's crazy it is nuts so you're down there maybe there's not enough light don't worry you're covered strap it on your bike after you got a 400k LED spotlight on the lawnmower. It's brilliant. So once again, get 20% off and free shipping with the code TALKINGRAPTORS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code TALKINGRAPTORS. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. And uh, if my girlfriend were here, she would enjoy endorse it too. There she, you go. She said, hey, heck of a job. <laughs> so there it is. <laughs> 20% off and free shipping with the code TalkingRaptors at Manscaped.com. Talking Raptors on Raptors Republic. Thing seven, not yet. No, only six. Twitter questions. Thank you to everybody who hit us up on Twitter with questions because... It is funny watching games now. Raptors Twitter is just a ghost town. It's quiet. There are tumbleweeds literally going across the feed when mm-hmm. you sit there. Like everyone's gone. Everyone is gone. There's maybe three people on our feed that still watch the game. Yeah. That are lunatics like us. Real fans, Barry. That's what that's called. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Real real fans. Real sad, too, maybe. You, could... you watch them through the highs and the lows. That's, that's what <laughs> fandom is. Yes. That is what it is. And uh, you know what's also insane? It's just me and you on the goddamn hashtag RTZ. Uh, <laughs> no, no. It's just us. We're the only ones left. But you know what? We're not going anywhere. Uh, no, that'll never so stop. That is now. Maybe it's our. It's our. Uh, uh, yeah, I, f- I don't. Not sure how it works, but I actually feel like it's to our detriment that we are the. <laughs> 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 it's, it's actually fucking us up on Raptors Twitter that we're still doing that. But we're not going to stop. Could be. Hey man, we'll, we'll get them to bring it back. That's, yeah, exactly. When it comes back, and then remember back in the day when they did Tweet of the Night and all that shit, we got tickets to games a couple times. Yeah, and, we won that a few times. Oh man, those were the days. Now they want us to take pictures. You're out of your fucking mind. I look disgusting. I haven't yeah. done anything by myself. No, we're not. We're not getting there. That's a lie, Manscaped. Uh, I look great. <laughs> <laughs> Although I will say that Tangerine Fan Angle is a bright moment in usually horrible games. Like you see kids smiling that still have hope like, yeah oh, it's wicked dude that's, it's that's, uh it's beautiful all the dogs nice. all the time yeah full yeah the full families <laughs> and i noticed too the last couple games it's just kids because like no adult is smiling watching these games you're not yeah you, you know what i mean you know better yeah <laughs> it's like it's just, just children mom and dad are probably drunk off camera being like all right let's take your picture but yeah you you're watching this uh millionaire exercise at this point right now <laughs> yes yeah, or not exercise. Just sit there on the bench and yeah, collect that money. I just really love that Fred Van Vliet keeps stealing the coaches' uniforms, man. I can't get over how fucking awesome. I that didn't is. realize coaches had uniforms. Yeah, they have. 
they have like the polo. Yeah. Look, like, you know. I didn't know that it was a th- like a team mandated thing, though. But you didn't notice every fucking game you watch? Everyone looks yes. exactly the same? Yeah, but they just look like they're in black hoodies or something, you know? Or no, what? It's like black polos. Hmm. But they, they got the Raptors logo on them. It's Interesting. team issued gear. Okay. They, they just didn't have to wear suits, right? That was right, the right. But that's what I mean. Like, it's not team issued suits, you know? Yeah, no, so you're right. So like maybe they got the freedom of the casual. To wear whatever they wanted? Casual Friday. Maybe they do, but the team was like, let's, let's not look like fucking psychopaths up here. Like, look like you belong. Yeah, no, I could see that. Kevin Ramshand. This is more specifically for Nick, but Barry, feel free to weigh in. Now that the season is essentially over and the Raptors are about to enter the summer offseason mode, which Raptor, past or present, would catch the most bubbles, get on the most bad at Carabana? Get on the most bad. This is just so Guyanese. Oh, boy. Oh, me, my mommy, and Abel. Um, who? You know what, man? Every time I've been to Carabana, it's always the ones you least expect the most. They just let loose. Utah Watanabe <laughs> is grinding and bubbling. Okay. Yeah, man. He's drinking Hennessy out of a water ball. He's fucked. He's having the time of his goddamn life. And is that catch the most bubbles and get on the most bad? Does that mean get drunk? Is that what we're talking about? Just go on with your madness and your badness, boy. You're being a bad boy this weekend. You're having fun. You drink up. You smoke cup. Your eyes red. Okay. I got you. So you're going to go Utah. It's always, it's all, any so caravan I've ever been to, been to a lot. It's always like. It's always like someone say it's like someone that looks like my dad fucking grinding on hot <laughs> girls. Dude. What? It's just it's just the person you never expect. Just like the the, the Rogers parade. Who's the drunk is the parade? Didn't see. Yeah, you're right. You didn't no think one, Marcus Allen no was gonna be that was gonna happen. fucking right. sloppy drunk? Couldn't talk. Couldn't talk. Swearing next to the goddamn prime minister. <laughs> I'm fucked up, bro. Yeah. Shh. Joe Sell. Will you guys get tickets to the first game back at Scotia? I'll buy you a beer if we bump into each other. Shout out to you, Joe Sell. We actually, with a couple other friends, have season tickets. We're very fortunate. Up in the 300s. Let's not get crazy. We're still working in comedy in Canada. Man, even if we were rich, I'd still be in the 300s. Yo, it's where the real ones are. That's not true. I've been, I've been down there. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah. no, I, I will never go yeah, back. <laughs> yeah, <that's... Right. laughs> but yeah, so, so uh, depending on how we divide up the tickets... We'll be at some games, Joe Sella, and we'll definitely link up with anyone who listens to this podcast that wants to crush a beer in halftime. Guys. Hell yeah, man. Unless the dogs are racing, I ain't leaving my fucking seat if no, that's no. the case. If, However, if, if, if it's a dog show, don't fucking talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you can stand by our seats and we'll order or do the app, the Scotiabank. Uh, <laughs> right, right. You know, they bring you food for you. Yeah. Any other halftime show, anyone wants to kill beers with us, we're in. Sandro Lukatic, does Gary's drop off in shooting concern you or do you see it as a way to lower his market value a bit for re-signing Ooh. that's a great question because he has fallen off a bit maybe it's injury related you know he's been off with some some of that for sure it's also like you he's been asked to do a lot more and then uh i don't know sometimes he thinks he's fucking michael jordan <laughs> he well, he was when he first got here yeah and that went away but yeah, that's a good point. Um, if anything, it could be a, a benefit because maybe he lowers his uh, his asking price. You know, he turned down. I was reading. He turned down four years, fifty two million. I think it was mm-hmm. from Portland. And then this was uh, was from an article from like a week ago. They're saying they think he's going to want four years at sixty. Mm-hmm. But now these last few games, maybe you're like, hey, let's go. Let's go back and look at that fifty two. Uh, Fifty-two million dollar option, there, Gary. Force him to take it. <laughs> not... you, you, you did it to yourself, Gary. Uh, to be <laughs> honest, does it? Bother, are you concerned at all with his? No, no? not at all. There's, uh, there's, this shit is a wash, man. Like, okay. <laughs> it's meaningless basketball. So literally, don't get hurt. Like you, you know, you want. I mean, you want to see what they can do, but it's not. This is not accurate of what he can do on a full mm-hmm. strength roster, right? True. All. Enterprise. I haven't really watched a game in a couple of weeks. I had enough of Tampa in this fake season. The Toronto Raptors remain the last true NBA champions. That's a great point. Tell them. Now I'm going to get a chicken sandwich or two and enjoy this beautiful weather because it's my birthday. Oh. Happy birthday, all. Enterprise. Happy Shout birthday. Shout out to you. Guess you. Tell you what, we'll give you 20% off a of manscaping lawnmower 4.0. <laughs> 
promo code talking raptors we sold out we fucking did it <laughs> we did it happy birthday to that man yeah happy birthday man and hey get it get a chicken sandwich and get the macaroni and cheese all right yes it's this your is, fucking birthday this is uh i don't want that to slip through the cracks because we've only been doing chicken sandwiches get the chicken on the macaroni and cheese and then you're gonna have to fucking go for a jog or something because that shit is eating you uh, from the inside <laughs> out man shiv if Masai gave Baines the max, how quickly would you turn on Masai? The good news is his option for next year is a team option. Yeah, I didn't think. Uh, <laughs> so we've likely seen the last of Aaron Baines. Well. Because he's got like a $7 million option. And I, for one, will miss him. <laughs> <laughs> and the fan account. You know what? We're going we're, we're gonna, to we're gonna keep following that account. Well, yeah. I mean, might, might as well have gone this far. Yeah. Geez, he'll be in... Shit, might be playing with J. Cole. Shit, who knows? <laughs> yeah. Josh, J. Treats. Have you guys, or maybe Barry's girlfriend, come across any good vegetarian chicken sandwiches on your quest, dying for some worthwhile alternatives? Actually, Tokyo Hot Fried Chicken has a vegetarian alternate chicken sandwich. So there you go. Haven't tried it, but it's on their menu. On there. And they, and they just moved up. Powering, yeah. they just knocked PG Clucks out of the spot. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, check it out. Tokyo Hot Fried Chicken is again um, College West, just past Osing, just west of Osington. Do you know of any vegetarian? <laughs> no, 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 sir, I do not. You can just get the just a macaroni and cheese without the chicken on top. <laughs> I don't know, man. No, I, I, uh, I am not vegetarian, so I, I never look for vegetarian options. So I, I apologize, Josh. I cannot help you, but I wish you luck, buddy. I mean, start with the Tokyo hot fried chicken and let us know. What do you see? So you've, you've we talked about this before. You like the the buffalo uh, cauliflower, right? Cauliflower wings, sure. Mm. Yeah, they're good. They're they're doable. Yeah. If you're dating a vegetarian, that's the move. Yeah. Nick, the main event. If you know ahead of time that the Raptors won't be able to play in Toronto again next season, does this change the direction of the franchise at all? Like maybe we just say fuck it and stare this motherfucker down to the ground tear tear this motherfucker down to the ground yeah i agree i agree with that if we're going back to tampa i don't know who gives a shit <laughs> uh i no you can't tear it down like if you're going back to tampa it's uh at least this time you'll know what to expect do you know what i mean you'll have a year under your belt you're like this is what it's gonna be yeah, no, nah, you're right. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Especially right. like if you stay there, everything's in order. Like this is kind of your, uh, this is your new normal, right? Like that. Yeah, that's what yeah. it would be. So yeah, no, nah, you're right. You're and right. you can't piss away uh, 27 and 28 year olds. Uh, you know, nah, prime of their going into the prime, or you know, arguably. Yeah. You can't piss away years like that for. No, you're right. You're right. Unless, if he means tear it down, like trade everyone for draft picks, I am not fucking ready to. I'm not Sam Preston in our team. That's right. not, not what we should I would, do. It just, I think if they had to go back to Tampa, it would. I would be fun, honestly, if they just ran everything through OG, like everything around him. Mm. I, that'd be something I'd be like. And now I'm pumped for this season. You know, mm -hmm. make him the first option. Siakam dips into two, thrives there. Fred does his thing. Cocoon Man. Hey. Someone on Raptors Twitter did an, did up an NBA conspiracy iceberg and raised an important question. What if Adam Silver is a vampire? He looks like a vampire. I could definitely... He looks like one. Yeah, he looks like... A, what's the famous one? Like the old school one? The Nesferatu? Mm. That's Yeah, he looks like that. He does. Yeah. And he also um, thrives off the blood of innocent people mm -hmm. so checks both boxes yeah <laughs> <laughs> hey man let's see uh let's see where we finish in this uh just draft lottery here and <laughs> yeah. might, might fucking be pro vampire i don't know yeah no exactly yeah let's see what he does let's not pass judgment until he if we get Cade cunningham come back that's yes th thanks man we love you know what tampa was wasn't so bad it's fucking well worth, worth it worth it what a vacation and finally this just broke 30 minutes ago. We're recording this on Wednesday Eve, and the Greek Geek hit us up. Pound the rock. The Detroit Pistons are filing a contract extension for Dwayne Casey, bringing his deal through to 23-24.
Pound the Rock, indeed. Shout out to Dwayne Casey. One of the best people on the planet. Sweet man. And a, ca- man. And a, and a basketball coach, too. He's, he's a basketball coach. Yeah, man. That rock's in that bitch. He's, he's, st- he's staying in Detroit. Hey, man. He's he's uh, he's kicked the shit out of the Raptors every time they've played. Yeah, and you know what, man? Like that, They got that Killian Hayes kid that looks like he's going to be good. Jeremy Grant. Like You get to see what's what's up. Mm-hmm. Siddiqui, Siddiqui Bay? Sadiq Bay? Listen, man, it's fucking Detroit. Is it Sadiq Bay or Sadiq? I, I, I think it's Sadiq. I'm, I'm not sure. But my friend's name is Sadiq, so... Hmm. Shout out to Sadiq if you're listening to this, by the way, bro. But they have some good young pieces, so good for, good for Dwayne Casey. He'll do, Just happy he, for he'll the do man. great. Yeah. He's, a great, he's a great human, and great humans deserve yeah. good things. Yeah, and he'll take that team as far as they can go, and Nick Nurse will come in and... <laughs> trade for Kawhi. Do you think The Rock is in Detroit? Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> that was his whole mantra. You think he changed it up when he's like, nah, man. But did they ship the actual locker the, room rock? He did the Pat Riley. He slicked his fucking hair back when he, <laughs> when he left. I just like thinking of like someone from MLSE just being like shipping it to Detroit with like a no return address on it. And they're like, yeah, okay, this is yours. No. Oh, yeah. How would you even get that there? Maybe it's like a forklift. It's like a kinder surprise. It's pieces, like it unscrews <laughs> top half. All right. Thank you to everybody who hit us up on Twitter. Appreciate that. Thanks to everyone who's actually listening to this podcast right now because uh, there's not much going on with this team. No, there's absolutely no reason to. So. <laughs> and uh, we provide no valuable insight. No. In anything statistically or... Um, I never will, for that matter, uh, statistically. No, and I think the advantage to you, listening... No, no, that's a lie. That's a goddamn lie. What's that? You read out numbers today, Barry. You read out odds. Oh, the draft odds, you're right. There you go. Absolutely right, I did. We're a numbers podcast now. There you go. We're a Manscaped numbers podcast. Going that's forward. right. 20% off manscaped.com there's more numbers what do what you this is <laughs> stats podcast promo now. code talking raptors let's go oh and real quick before we get out of here thank you to everyone who has subscribed and written reviews on itunes that, yep. mean, that legit means a lot thank you keep keep doing that that actually like that, that helps helps us yeah a, a shit ton yeah, it does so and thank we you didn't realize until eight years <laughs> in but look at us <laughs> we, we got smooth balls <laughs> <laughs> and, and a couple five star reviews. Thank you very much. Sixty three reviews on there, man. Get out of here. Sixty three people. Come on, let's go for sixty four by next week. Let's go to seventy. Fucking have some goddamn confidence in yourself. <laughs> seventy it is. But genuinely, thank you to anyone who has uh, subscribed and written a nice review. Yeah, get your manscaped to shave this. <laughs> <laughs> shave. If you can shave talking raptors into your balls. We'll Send us a picture. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get post, you blocked on fucking Instagram. We'll or, post it on our Twitter account. Yeah. <laughs> Retweet that, mom. <laughs> Woo. Okay. So next. Went, I went off the rails real quick at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're doing it next week. Season wrap up. And Fifteen chicken sandwiches going down at once. Yeah, it's it's gonna be glorious. Thanks again for listening. Follow us on Twitter at Talking Raptors. Let's go Raptors. Hey, thanks for sticking around for the comedy record segment here. This week's comedian is none other than the hilarious, amazing human, Pat Bircher. The man, the myth, the legend. This guy, again, one of the funniest people you're ever going to see. He is currently living in New York City. He's originally from the GTA. He lived overseas for a bit, was doing comedy in England. Mm -hmm. And uh, he tours Australia quite a bit. He tours actually um, like Southeast Asia too. Yeah. But right now he's doing his thing in New York City and he's killing it. You can check him out at patbircher.com. On Twitter and Instagram, he's just Pat Bircher. Bircher is a B U R T S C H E R. Mm-hmm. Super funny dude and uh, very 
He's fucking hilarious, but also like very uh, thoughtful. Yes. He's super thoughtful, really funny. And his sister lives in the next door building, so when he comes back to visit, really? yeah, oh, yeah, I knew that. That's right. And we uh, yeah. we get to hang out all the time, man. Go for nice coffees. Yeah, that's great. And I guess I would say the thing, one of his sort of unique qualities is that while he is very funny, he also does have some, there's some depth to his comedy. Yeah. You know? He there's, cares. He cares deeply about uh, the world that he yes. lives in. And he sees, his big thing is, I guess, what he often brings up just in conversations is looking for solutions as opposed to just complaining about shit. Mm-hmm. You know? It's like, how do you, okay, yeah, this sucks. How do you make it better? Mm-hmm. Kind of thing. Yeah, he's just a very, very funny man. His debut album, Patty Cakes, came out in 2018. Killed it. It is much like all of the albums we released with our comics. They're featured prominently on Sirius XM in America. That's right. Yeah, that's a thing. Because a lot of people listen to Sirius XM in America. And the funny thing is when we go down there and give them our albums... They're always like, what you, they're like, you keep sending us all these bangers. Like, who are these, who are these people? And it's like, yeah, well, they're, they're in Canada. That's why you don't know who they are. Yeah. Wasting well, away. Yeah. But we're changing that one album at a time, one show at a time. Oh, and real quick, a couple of people have said, how can I support comedy records? One thing you could do, obviously our social media accounts, you can follow them or subscribe to um, our Spotify page because everyone's album is there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then you go from there. That's just something I was thinking. The other Subscribe day. to that. So there it is. So check us out on Spotify. But right now, let's check out something from Pat Bircher from his debut album, Patty Cakes. Once again, you can check him out at patbircher.com or on Twitter and Instagram. Pat Bircher. It's just that simple. And here he is right now. It's the comedy record segment on Talking Raptors. I don't know. There's loads of stupid stuff, you know? Is there? Sure. Why not? <laughs> I think they should make it so... Because if you're broke they should, or in debt, they should make your money gray. <laughs> that way people know when you're paying for something, they're like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> I appreciate the gesture, but look at this stuff. I got all the colors over here. You got nothing. You know, what are you doing? You're insane. That's why you're in the place you're in. (laughs) Keep buying people shit you can't afford. It's beautiful. I didn't, I wasn't pointing at you. (laughs) I would have gray money too. (laughs) Only I'd make, I'd color mine. (laughs) There's always a way. Where there's a will, there's a way to ruin your life. Uh, Right? They always tell you that there's light at the other end of the tunnel, you know? When you light at the other end of the tunnel is always hope. Sometimes it's just a train. (laughs) Stand to the wall. Find a wall, just fucking pray the train's not a wide train. Unless you want to end it all, then fucking double barrel. Get your dick out or your vag or whatever, start flapping it at the train, be like, I've been waiting for you. I, uh, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Yeah. You know? Just make up your mind. (laughs) 